So as we as we go to questions, I just want to say uh, that I think that I do believe that what we saw today was a very strong manifestation, in fact, some would even say indictment, of this administration's cone of silence in their cover-up. This is on, this is about our the oath we take to protect and defend the Constitution. But some of the actions uh, that the administration may have taken, and we'll see through our investigation, may have jeopardized our national security by strengthening Russia's hand and interfering in our elections, undermining democracy, not only in our country, but in other countries as well, upsetting our preeminence as a democracy in the world. This is very serious. Today was very important. Again, salute our chairman, all of our six chairmen who have been involved in this, and now we can take some questions. Okay, so who do you want to hear from first? You guys decide. <laughs> Wait a minute, how about a new person? And Katie, okay, she's having a baby. We have to go there first. <laughs> As a mother of five, I do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Madam Speaker, what you saw today, did it change whether or not you think the House of Representatives should launch impeachment proceedings? My position has always been uh, that whatever decision we made in that regard would have to be done with our strongest possible hand, and we still have some outstanding matters in the courts. It's about the Congress, the Constitution, and the courts, and we are fighting the president on, uh, in the courts. Madam Speaker, to be clear here, isn't the issue. Madam Speaker, to be clear here. Madam Speaker, to be clear here. Madam Speaker, to be clear here. Excuse me. <laughs> Can I just hold? Some of your members told me that they were very concerned about the fact that the House of Representatives told us over the course of today that they were expecting imminent action of some kind. No, I don't know why they did. What What are the very I don't know why they thought that. But they came to me and I said, I don't know why. The very next step is the lawsuit. Yeah. The, again, the lawsuit says, as, as, uh, we have a number of lawsuits. Do you want to speak to that, Jerry? Please. Well, the very next step, I'm not going to talk longer range, the very next step, either tomorrow or Friday, is we're going into court to enforce, uh, to ask for the uh, grand jury material and to enforce the subpoena against uh, Mr. McGahn. And uh, that's particularly important because uh, the excuses, and I won't call them reasons, the excuses that the White House gives for McGahn not testifying, uh, the nonsense about absolute immunity, et cetera, are the same excuses for all the other uh, fact witnesses. And if we break that, we'll break the logjam. Madam Speaker, what about, where, where do you stand right now? What do you need to know on impeachment to say, okay, we don't know enough yet? There's Did I just not here. say, we're waiting to hear the, uh, from the courts, so we have our subpoenas in the court for, and the subpoenas are for information. And we and when we get that information, so we can make a judgment. So that will be a telltale sign about whether or not you. you know, what, we, we have so several considerations. It's about uh, what information is there, and this isn't endless. This isn't endless. Sure. I, I understand that, but we have live cases in the courts. We have some that are going forward. Uh, that Mr. Uh, Chairman uh, Nather just mentioned. It isn't endless, but would strengthen our hand to get that information. Remembering that in the uh, Watergate was when they got the information in the tapes that broke the case. So it wasn't just about uh, uh, changing public opinion. That helped change public opinion. But it's not about me. It's about our caucus. It's about our country. As I say, there's a cone of silence in the White House that is engaged in a massive cover-up in the obstruction of justice. Those obstruction of justice charges, have, as has been demonstrated today in the hearings, uh, are, uh, could be indictable offenses by anybody else, not the president of the United States and the president when he's no longer president. But the American people, I, I think that if we go to down that path, we should go in the strongest possible way. And that's all I'm going to say about the subject. We have our distinguished let me, chairs let me, here. Let me, let me say something. Um, and, I, and I know Chairman Schiff and Cha Chairman Nadler are uh, would repeat what I well, what I'm saying. Um, you know, the, the the American people in the last election, um, even from Trump districts, said we want to make the president accountable. A lot of people loved him; they like him, they, but they want to make him accountable. And we have been stonewalled with regard to getting information, access to witnesses. 
um, and, and getting documents. All of us have. Remember, the president said, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to give you a, 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 anything, really. And so, again, this, the speaker is absolutely right. We, 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 it's, we're going to, we're gathering information and we are met with, with significant force. But we're plowing our way through. But all of that information, piece by piece, is like a mosaic, paints the picture. But you have long said that there's no point in moving forward with an impeachment inquiry because Republicans control the Senate. It's going to die in the Senate. Is that no longer your I have never concern? long said that. I have never long said that. If we have a case for impeachment, that's the place we will have to go. The fact that why I'd like it to be a strong case is because I don't, it, it's based on the facts, the facts and the law. That's what matters, not politics, not partisanship, just patriotism. I don't care. What the, I mean, I'd like the Senate to be responsible and honor their oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution, uh, to see the challenge this is to our national security, what the Russians trying to do to our country. But the stronger our case is, the worse the Senate will look for just letting the president off the hook. Speaker Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi even Look, after God, the We hearing, have these great chairmen here who know so much, please. Well, I'm going to start asking them questions if you... <laughs> uh, even after these hearings, the president said he's completely exonerated, no, despite please, what Mr. On, Mueller said. Come on, so come on, come on. What have these hearings really please. changed? Let me just say this. You give me the opportunity to say this, and then I invite my uh, chairman to close. We want to have the strongest possible case to make a decision as to what path we will go down. And that does, is not endless in terms of time or endless in terms of the information that we want. But if it comes to a point where the cone of silence and the obstruction of justice and the cover-up in the White House prevents us from getting that information, that will not prevent us from going forward. In fact, it's even more grounds to go forward. My colleagues? I just want to just echo that. Um, you know, Martin Luther King said something that I that is in the DNA of every cell in my brain, particularly right now. He said, there comes a point when silence becomes betrayal. And we refuse to betray generations that are unborn and the American people. We're not going to betray them. And the more we're just we're accumulating information and doing the best we can, again, with, with a force as great, I don't know how many lawyers the president has, but he's got a lot of them. And they go against every single thing we do. And so, again, we all, we all, we're, gonna, we're not going to betray America. We're going to do our part to make sure that we have a, a democracy that's intact. Jerry? The United States is a democracy. It must remain a democracy. A democracy acts through the elected officials with the consent of the people. The people cannot give that consent unless they know the facts. Today was a watershed day in telling the facts to the American people. With those facts, we can proceed. And we face a time of great danger. Richard Nixon said he thought that the president was a dictator. He said, if the president does it, that means it's not illegal. President Trump echoed that yesterday. He said, under Article 2, I, that is he, can do anything I want. That is a totalitarian picture, not a democratic picture. The United States must be saved from this. So we have to paint the picture of what's going on, a picture of someone who gladly accepted help from a foreign power interested in subverting our election, our democratic election process, and that's what it is, subverting our election process and taking the choice of our president to some extent away from the American people. That's what the Russians attempted to do, and that's what the Trump campaign welcomed them in doing. A president who engages in crimes, repeated crimes, to cover up these unpatriotic and, and, and dictatorial actions. And this cannot go on. And it's up to Congress to safeguard the Constitution, and we will do it.